So if I have 8x to the fifth minus 81x equals 0, what I simply need to do is, obviously, again, let's see if I can factor it. Well, I know I can factor out a GCF, which would be x. Leave me with x to the fourth minus 81 equals 0. Now, um, we could just set these both equal to 0 and then solve. So try to take the fourth root of x, though. To me, out of the top of my head, I'm like, that kind of sounds a little bit confusing, right? I'm like, I don't know about that one. So what I could do then is x times x to the fourth minus 81. Let's see, can I factor this further? Right? Can I break that down and factor it again? Well, you notice that this is a difference of two squares. Can x to the fourth be written as a squared number? Yeah, can we write it as x squared squared? Would that, still give, would that give you x to the fourth? And then can we write 81 as a squared number? Yeah. 9 squared, right? So remember, difference of two squares goes in this form, a plus b times a minus b. Well, therefore, my a, in this case, a equals x squared and b equals 9. So therefore, I can factor this to x times x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 9 equals 0. Okay, So I factor this form to x squared minus 9, x squared plus 9. Now I apply the zero product property, x equals 0, x squared minus 9 equals 0, and x squared plus 9 equals 0. So now we solve. So x equals 0, square root, x equals plus or minus 3, square root, x equals plus or minus 3i. Notice the difference between the th plus or minus 3 and the plus or minus 3i. Right? When you take the square root of the negative number, you're going to get your, or with the negative number, you're going to have the i. Huh? x just equals 0, because I already solved. So therefore, you look, and there's our three solutions. So you could say, all right, I have three real rational roots, and I also have two complex roots, which are stated right there. OK? Cool.